The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Demystify Metadata Relationships with the new Dependency API. I'm Chris Chant. I'll be your host for today. And we are joined by Vlad Karasimov, a Director of Product Management here at Salesforce. Before we begin, some of you are going to be familiar with this slide. I'd like to share with you that we might be looking at some technologies that are not currently available in market. Uh, and so this slide lets you know that uh, we might be making some forward-looking look statements. Please make any buying decisions based only on what is currently available in market today. Don't forget, us to follow, don't forget to follow us on social channels. We're available on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and all your favorite social media outlets. Um, this meeting is being recorded, sorry, excuse me, this webinar is being recorded, and the recording will be available to you on YouTube, as well as sent out to all attendees via email. Don't worry if you have any questions. We'll be, we'll be fielding questions throughout the presentation. Don't wait until the end. Feel free to ask your questions as we move along. Uh, make sure to stick around for that live Q&A at the end of the session. We're, we're going to save about 10 or 15 minutes for Q&A at the very end. Uh, and if you have additional questions, please head over to the developer forums at developer.salesforce.com slash forums to answer any additional questions you have. And with that, I'm going to hand you off to Vlad. He's going to tell you how to demystify metadata relationships with a new Dependency uh, API. Take Thank you, away. Chris. You're welcome. Hi, everyone. And uh, as Chris said, good morning, good afternoon, no, good, good evening, based on where you're located. Uh, my name is Vladimir. Um, I'm a product manager here at Salesforce. Uh, you might know me as a product manager for custom metadata types, but uh, today I'm almost not going to talk about custom metadata types. I'm saving it for a little bit, uh, but I'm going to cover a new dependency API that some of you might already heard about it and some of you might not. Uh, and that's a good chance to get the basics of what we're going to release and what is currently available and learn how you can leverage it in your development, in your org, and any everyday activities you do as a developer on an administrator in Salesforce. So, uh, you know that Salesforce recently celebrated 20th birthday. Uh, pretty big deal, right? Uh, we, we are being together for 20 years with a lot of you, and uh, your org has been growing for 20 years as well. And, uh, you know, uh, trying to scale, uh, trying to keep up with all the new technologies coming up um, often makes things very complicated. Um, you know, in the 20 years that you have an org, you probably went through uh, different administrators and developers, different contractors and things like that. And now it might be a little bit harder to understand how those things are connected together. Uh, you know, you might have some third party contractor building some application for you. Or maybe you had that administrator who implemented something and left. And often it's quite possible that they did not leave enough documentation or things just got too complicated or maybe documentation is outdated. And every time you want to make a change, you find in yourself struggling to understand the impact of that change. On the other side, uh, Salesforce been uh, pushing everyone to adopt Salesforce DX and unlock packages. And one of the common questions that comes with that is like, how am I going to break up things in my org, package them separately? and uh, follow that sort of driven development approach. And all of those questions are, are extremely valid, and that's why we, we introduce in Dependency API as a tool, as a baseline foundational thing that would help you to address some of them. And you know, if I'm to summarize everything that I've been just describing with 20 years of history, um, I really like that website it, and it has a lot of what they call confessions. And that's a real administrators and developers writing um, their experiences and that conf confession number 222, a really nice number, uh, and change an API name of a field and made a mess. So in short, dependency API here to help you to avoid making a mess when you make a change in your work. And uh, it's here to, to help you uh, to drive um, more, um, drive better understanding of what you're doing, better understanding of the impact analysis and things like that. So what is Dependency API, right? I've been talking about all the problems, but here's the solution, right? So Dependency API is technically just an extension of a tool in API. It's a new virtual entity called Metadata Component Dependency that is available through tool in API. 
that provides you a snapshot of all the dependencies, of almost all of the dependencies within your org. Um, it will be able to tell you where a particular component is referenced, by what component, and it will provide you uh, pretty much a basic eight different fields within that object. First of all, uh, it will tell you the metadata component IDs. So if, for example, a custom field is uh, referenced by a page layout, you would get a metadata component ID for custom field and a reference metadata component ID for page layout. As well as you will be able to see uh, component names uh, to make it a little bit easier to understand. Uh, not all of us remember components by IDs. Uh, I know some of us probably do memorize all of the custom object IDs uh, and names I had, but like I'm not one of those person. Uh, and then uh, you also will be able to see namespaces in case, uh, let's say, you got a managed package installed in your org and you put that uh, custom field from that managed package onto one of your layouts that existed in your org, you'll be able to track those kind of dependencies as well. In this case, you'll see that this custom field is coming from uh, that managed package, uh, pretty handy. And of course, you'll be able to see component types. So uh, in the examples that I've been using so far, custom field on layout, you'll be able to see that this component is a custom field and that component is a page layout. So it, it provides you very basic information, pretty much like a pair mapping between different metadata components that are referenced by each other. Uh, and I'm super excited actually to say that like, you know, we not only releasing a dependency API, we have already released a declarative tool that is built on top of dependency API. Some of you might have seen uh, a new feature that came out in winter 20 uh, called where this field used. And this pretty much a, a, a thing that we built using dependency API that is available declaratively for all of the admins um, on all the custom fields. So on any custom fields in your org, you can go to setup, you can go to custom field definition page, and you will be able to see where a particular custom field is referenced with a click of a button. So this way you don't need to uh, execute any sort of any sort of API queries. Uh, it would make it way easier for people maybe without coding experience or for someone who just needs a quick snapshot to see, uh, well, what's gonna change if I update this custom field. Uh, not to mention uh, something I'm, I'm really proud of, together with that idea, we retired 37,000 points uh, it's been a, a long-lasting idea on Idea Exchange uh, that we finally delivered, and um, I just want to take a moment and say and say thank you for everyone who voted for that idea, who didn't give up on us uh, delivering it, and who left their comments and thanks. Um, I encourage everyone to continue using Idea Exchange, and with all, with all the goodness that is going on prioritization, how we change things, Idea Exchange actually becoming even more powerful than before. And um, I, I myself often find a lot of inspirations in idea exchange and uh, uh, we, we, we're trying to incorporate the feedback you're giving there into our product roadmaps constantly. So um, two things, right? A dependency API and the declarative, one of the first declarative tools we built uh, on top of dependency API called where is this used? And uh, there might be more in the future. But with that, I actually want to uh, go ahead and show you a quick demo because I think all of, all of that that I, I, I just talked about is cool, but uh, I'm sure some of you want to see this in action. And I'm going to end up my presentation and uh, I'm going to show you my org. So here I am in my org. Uh, hopefully it looks familiar to all of you. Uh, so as I mentioned, I'm a product manager for custom metadata types and of course, I cannot skip an opportunity to talk about it a little bit. Uh, so a common scenario and something that we really pushing people to do is to migrate from custom settings to custom metadata types. In short custom metadata types at one point, at some point would replace custom settings. And you're probably wondering how am I gonna migrate? So the big challenge here is if you have uh, some custom settings and you build some application or solution, uh, you need to understand where that custom setting is referenced in order to replace it with custom metadata types, update all the references properly, and make sure that your application 
continue to work even after you switch to custom metadata types. So here I am in my org, gonna take a look at what kind of custom settings I have. So in my org, you can see I have a couple of them. And um, if you're wondering, I have a solution built here that uh, does automatic record type mapping. And let's say I'm, I'm, I'm tasked to, to replace it with custom metadata types. So I really need some sort of like entry point to where to begin. So maybe I'll just decide to replace one of the custom settings first. In this case, I can go to record type mapping custom setting. Here I am, and I can figure out the idea of this record um, of that custom setting. And I, I want to see where that custom setting is referenced. Uh, the easiest way to find a, find an idea of something is just to look to to the uh, URL on top of your browser, and then you'll see that uh, a Salesforce ID for that object. So now, when I have that ID, what I can do, I can issue a dependency API query for this particular custom setting, and for that. I'm gonna be using my uh, I'm gonna be using my uh, CLI, uh, and if you never use SFDX CLI, it's a command line interface that allows you to do a lot of cool things. Pretty much, it is your one stop for a lot of development and even administrative ex uh, activities. But what I'm gonna do here, and um, I'm cheating a little bit, I had all my queries already written, of course. I don't want to take chances uh, doing a live demo without without them. But what am I going to do here? I'm going to use a, a SFDX command called force data circle query. This uh, command allows me to execute API queries. And I'm telling it that I want to use tooling API because, as I said earlier, a dependency API is technically extension of tooling API, and we're just querying for a particular entity within the tooling API. So now I have my query. You can see that I'm gonna query for from metadata component dependency. This is a dependency API virtual entity that we're using. And what I wanna see, I wanna see a component name, IDs, and type that are referencing my custom setting. This ID here is the ID of that custom setting that I showed you just a, a moment ago. So now I'm gonna execute this command. And um, I should be able to see where this custom setting is referenced. And here it is. Pretty quick as well. Um, let me actually adjust a little bit so to make sure that you see all of it. It might be cut a little bit. So you can see that that custom setting is actually referenced by three different Apex classes. And um, this is a good start. I mean, now I know that in order to, for me to replace that uh, custom setting with a custom metadata type, I would need to go at least to those three epics classes, make necessary changes, and uh, update them. Uh, but let's take an uh, even deeper look into, into how these things unfold. So let's say I want to see what are other things that are referenced by this particular epics class. So now I know that custom setting is referenced in them, but what else is touching? What else that epics class is touching? So I have another query somewhere here. And uh, just um, give me a second to find it. Here it is. So here, another SFDX command, uh, same one, of course, that I'm going to see everything that is referenced within that class. So uh, I'm, I'm going to see reference metadata component name, type, and IDs. And I want to query for metadata component ID equal to that ep first Apex class. And they look very similar, but you see they only difference by one digit because it's a scratch org that I just pushed everything. So they're pretty sequential here. Um, but uh, we're gonna see what else is referenced by this Apex class. Here we are, gonna execute another um, dependency API query. And it works like magic today, very fast. Uh, so I can see that this Apex class is referencing six different components. It referencing uh, four different custom fields and two different custom objects. Uh, and if you like really paying attention into details, you probably already noticed that those two custom objects are actually my custom settings. Uh, the reason why they listed as a custom object is because, well, custom setting technically uh, just a special case of custom object. And in terms of metadata API, um, 
that there is no difference. Uh, they are all covered by custom object as a top level entity. So you will not be able, unfortunately, to distinguish if this is a custom setting or if that is a custom object by just looking through the dependency API. And uh, now I can see those fields and stuff. Um, one of the common questions that we get often and one, one of the requests that people is asking for is they saying, well, I got the dependency API results, but I'm not able to tell where this particular custom field is coming from. I know this EPIS class is referencing this custom field, but what what is it? Is it a custom field on account? Is it a custom field on some custom object or somewhere else? And they are, they are even asking us to extend dependency API for that. And um, well, technically you can figure it out using tooling API. And I'm just gonna show it um, in case you are wondering about the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the first custom field here. And I wanna issue uh, another tooling API query this time. And I just wanna say uh, against custom field. And this would tell me where this custom field is coming from. And this has nothing to do with dependency API. This is just how you're likely to use it. And it would tell me that this custom field came from object ID 01, I blah, 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 which not really helpful because again, unless you memorize all of your custom objects, uh, it would not be, you would not be able to tell which one is that. And that's where you can just do another query really quick uh, against custom object table. And this would finally tell the object name. So now we know that this custom field feature enabled is coming from object called feature settings, which is one of my custom settings. And that's how like you can you can still use dependency API and get the answers you're looking for. Yes, it would require a little bit more queries. What we're actually thinking about is uh, creating a, a separate uh, a CLI plugin for that that would be able to incorporate that. I don't think we're going to extend dependency API necessarily, but having a plugin that able to to pull that information uh, for you that would be definitely helpful. So this is just a demo for dependency API. Really quick, we will be able to figure out where a particular custom setting is referenced. We were able to take a deeper look into what else is referenced by particular Apex class. And we were able to find out where that particular custom field is coming from using the tool and API query. So now if I go back to my org, um, I just wanna show you something else. So as I mentioned, we were looking what into some of the things uh, programmatically with dependency API, but as I said before, you you will be able to use uh, declarative side of dependency API as well for for simple things. Let's say I want to find out where this feature enabled field is referenced. I don't need, I can do it through dependency API as I just showed you, but I can do it declaratively from setup. You will be able to see that where this used button, uh, and then if you click it, it will tell you that this particular custom field is referenced within three different Apex classes and one validation role. And what is cool, you can actually follow from right from this page to the definition of any of those components and take a closer look. Uh, in case of my validation role, I'll be able to follow and I'll be able to see that I'm using it right here, feature enabled underscore underscore C. Not sure if you see it well, but here it is. Uh, pretty cool, uh, declaratively available. Uh, honestly, we overwhelmed by how much of this feature is used. Uh, we expected it going to be popular based on an ID exchange vote count, but every day we get over twenty thousand clicks on that button, and this is this is mind blowing. Uh, I honestly did not imagine that there is a such high demand, but apparently there is, and uh, we're happy. We're happy to see it. So now going back to my slides uh, for a few more things that I want to cover. Okay. So uh, currently, uh, I probably mentioned it earlier, maybe not, but where this use button is generally available starting winter 20. So you can go and use it in, um, in any of your Oryx sandboxes production it there. Um, and dependency API is currently still in beta. And there are some limitations that comes with the beta, at least for now. And they, some of them might go into GA as well. Hopefully we'll be able to drop some of them, but 
The most important limitations that we had to introduce is around how many results you can get back from the Depends API. And it's currently limited to 2,000 records. So every time you perform a Depends API query, you will not see more than 2,000 records. And that, that might be a little bit um, concerning uh, in case, for example, you wanted to take a look at your whole, uh, at your org as a whole, or maybe at the whole app, or some some big components that reference in in, in so many different places, uh, that unfortunately would not be really possible. You will really have to uh, dig deeper into like particular uh, component ID, like in an example that I showed, uh, using IDs of components, maybe a, a component uh, type and things like that. Uh, but it was done just for transparency. It was done for performance. You just saw how quick depends API. Uh, every time I issue a query, it returns results right away. And in general, uh, between pilot and beta, we have seen a performance improvement sometimes up to 15 times faster. Uh, literally, when I used to do this similar presentation for pilot depends API at some, uh, some meetings, it would take me twice as much time to get my results back, even on a small scratch works. There are some uh, additional limits on uh, what you can put in the where clause. Um, I expect some of them to be gone by, by the time we go GA. Uh, but the most important is 2000, just to keep in mind. So now uh, the good part, uh, roadmap. So as I mentioned, um, button is available in, in, in GA uh, in winter 20. We are just released dependency API to open beta. Uh, which means it's now available in production and and sandboxes without any uh, need for a, uh, activation or any need to reach out to Salesforce for that. You can just go directly to your production work or your sandbox, which I would recommend, and run uh, depends on CPAC query using SFDX CLI, maybe developer console, whatever tool you prefer. Uh, just don't forget this is a tool in API query. It's not a, a clear SQL query. You need to run it as a tool in API. So Spring 20, it's available across all of the orgs. Uh, now, for this year, we have pretty big plans. First of all, uh, on the 2000 record limit, uh, we unlikely to change it for Depends API, but we are working on something that we call Bulk Depends API. And Bulk Depends API is, um, is addition to Bulk 2.0, and it would allow you to query Depends API using Bulk 2.0. And of course, as a bulk um, bulk API, it's asynchronous, but it would not have 2000 record limit. So if you want to query for the whole org, you can do it. You can um, enqueue the job using bulk API. You'll get your results back uh, after some time, and you can use uh, some third party tools like, uh, for visualization or any sort of pro post processing that you would like to do. And uh, Winter 20, uh, Next winter, uh, which is like a Dreamforce release, we're planning to uh, move Dependency API as well as Bulk Dependency API into GA. And as part of that, an um, important part of that, I think, is uh, we're planning to introduce what we call coverage report. Some of you might have uh, used uh, metadata coverage report, a pretty neat tool when it comes to, to understanding what components supported in what channels because Salesforce have metadata API, tooling API, unlock packages, packages, Apex metadata API, and all things like that. And it gets a little bit complicated to pick a right channel um, for, for your job. So we are thinking about the same. Uh, so right now, depends API, um, you might be uh, asking a question, what is exactly supported in depends API? And this is a complex problem. Like it's not like we can produce a simple doc because there's an amount of combinations, amount of things uh, that goes into Depends API is huge. Pretty much um, every other team at Salesforce contributes into it. So we want to produce some sort of coverage report where you can uh, pretty fast switch between different components, see what kind of reference you should be expecting to get, if there are any uh, existing gaps or any existing problems with those uh, components, you should be able to see it from that report. So this would give you like um, a full transparency into what is supported, what is not supported. And as well, it would help us to drive a conversation internally with partner teams. Because my team, unfortunately, oh, fortunately, I guess, does not own all of those components, but 
we are surfacing dependencies for them uh, via dependency API. So we want to drive those conversations internally, listening to your feedback um, and uh, helping to close those gaps uh, as much as we can. So again, super excited. Um, I really hope to, to be on stage at Dreamforce talking about this uh, API coming to GA. Uh, there's always some uh, documentation available. Um, release notes, probably a first stop you should make, um, as well as their developer documentation on metadata component dependency within tooling API section. And there's a trailblazer community called dependency API slash field usage beta. Um, sorry for a weird name, but uh, as you know, you cannot put more than 80 characters into anything in Salesforce. So we have to <laughs> cut it a little bit um, to fit into that limit. But uh, this is a lovely community. There are a lot of uh, people who are already using dependency API or the button as uh, they share in their feedback. Uh, I'm closely monitoring that group, answering any questions, as well as you probably will be able to find a lot of uh, questions already answered there. Um, and with that, I think it's time for Q&A. That's right. And, uh, back to Chris. Glad. Thank you so much for that, for that awesome presentation. And that's right, it's time for the Q&A section. If you have any questions for Vlad, please feel free to use the questions button in the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, just a couple of reminders. Uh, make sure you check out trailhead.salesforce.com for all your learning needs. Join our conversation on Facebook and on Twitter, where we are at Salesforce Devs. And make sure to subscribe to our Telegram channel. You can go to bit.ly slash webinar in APAC. Okay. One thing I almost forgot, we actually planning to release a trailhead module on dependency API. And uh, I don't have timing yet, but uh, this is on our list and we're working with our doc writers and the trailhead team to make that available as well. Awesome, awesome. So keep your eyes peeled for the dependency API module on uh, on trailhead. And uh, we have a, we have a few questions for you here, Vlad. I hope we I hope we get some good uh, get some good uh, coverage here today. But um, what you know, one of the first questions was, could you kind of walk us through some of the common use cases you expect people to use the dependency API for? Yeah. So we we have seen quite few already. And actually, when even we were in pilot, um, I encourage everyone to go and check it out. A couple of Dreamforces ago, there was a presentation by. Daniel and uh, his name, last name Bollinger, I believe. Um, yeah, he's actually on the call right now. He's on the call right now. Yes. So he did an amazing, um, amazing presentation on dependency API, and he put some amazing uh, project together on how you can visualize Apex test coverage uh, with uh, using dependency API and things like that. So that might be a little bit extreme to start from, but I think this is a this is an amazing direction. A lot of you can take. As simple things like, as I mentioned, you're thinking about moving something into an unlock package and you want to figure out how the things are connected and where you can kind of draw the line and separate them. So that's together paired with together some visualization, graph visualization tool, you should be able to achieve with um, dependency APIs as a foundation. Uh, simpler things, you are working on refactoring something, maybe you're refactoring the Epic's code. Uh, and you want to know what, what else is referenced by that Apex class, for example, uh, what else you need to test and maybe what else might get affected. You can at least get some, some sense of like all the components that tied to that Apex class. So as you do that refactory, you also pay attention to testing uh, the possible uh, changes and possible things that you might break. And uh, for admins, I think there's a bigger thing that like every time they want to delete a field, they want to know what's going to be affected actually without clicking the delete button. Um, and for, for, for the fact, we actually support reports references, something that uh, is not covered by delete logic. So as for today, you can delete a custom field that is referenced in report, and that report is not going to get broken, but it would miss some piece of information that you might expect to see. So with the button and with the PAM CPI, you'll be able to see those references to the reports and you'll be able to you'll know that like, okay, maybe I shouldn't be deleting this field because my VP might be using this report tomorrow. So things like that. Um, and there, there are a lot of, there are a few partners that are already trying to incorporate dependency API into their solutions for impact analysis and some uh, org documentation processes. So uh, opportunities are countless. Uh, it's, it's you guys, 
Yeah, I'm sure you guys would come up with something that we even haven't thought about it. And th that's the exciting part of being here at Salesforce. Uh, always fascinating to see what, what people are building with, uh, with the simple tools that we provide. Awesome. Thanks. So here's a question uh, about uh, the command line usage. The question was, uh, they know, the, the, the asker noticed that you use the use uh, tooling API flag or uh, property on the, CLX, uh, on the Salesforce DX CLI. Um, the question is, what is the relationship uh, between the tooling API and the dependency API? So uh, as, as I mentioned, there's, if I, dependency API, if I would be completely honest and transparent, dependency API is a marketing name. <laughs> That's how we advertise about it because like, hey, here's a dependency API. But in fact, it just, it's a tooling API thing that powers it up. So think about dependency API is a, is a part of tooling API. So that's that that's a relationship. Great. So basically, it's kind of like a feature. The feature. This is a feature API. of tooling API, but we didn't want to like present it like, okay, here's what you can do through tooling API. Yeah. We want to emphasize that this is a new capability that is is not really something you were able to do before. Awesome. So, awesome. so yeah, that's you think about it. It's dependency tooling API <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. In fact, we're gonna call it bulk dependency tool and API or something like there will be some reference into tool and API through bulk as well. Great. Thanks. So in summary, it's just a feature. It's a feature of the tooling API. That's why we use the flag. Uh, and kind of building on that question, uh, one of our one of our uh, attendees has a question, can we use can we query using Sockle and Workbench direct to the object to get the inf info instead of using Salesforce DX CLI? I believe you can run, uh, it's been a while since I used Workbench, I'll be honest. I believe you can execute tool and API through Workbench. You would not be able to run just a regular Sockle query. It still has to be tool and API. So developer console is probably the other uh, option if you don't like to use um, SFDX CLI for some reason. Uh, developer console is, a, is another place where you can you can run tool and API. and uh, Workbench, I believe there is a way to execute tooling API query. Uh, I've honestly never done it since I learned about this FDX CLI. I just found this way more uh, sophisticated compared to Workbench. And maybe based on my needs, um, I'm sure there's reasons why I'm using Workbench today. Awesome. Um, continuing that thread, is it possible with the dependency API to get the dependencies for standard fields? Yeah, that's that question comes a lot. Uh, currently, standard fields are not supported. Uh, we know that uh, there's a big demand for that. This is honestly something probably will be considering for post GA uh, timeframe. And the reason for that, uh, well, again, just for transparency, we we not act, we we honest, we're not building, we're not collecting any additional new information. We're using the information that Salesforce has been collecting and utilizing for like delete logic and packaging logic and things like that. So those reference being tracked. For standard entities, it's a little bit different because they not, you cannot delete the standard field, for example. So the bunch of information that we'll get for free for custom entities, custom fields, for example, is not available for standard fields. So we can expose some of it, but it will be super inconsistent compared to what you can see with custom fields. And there's a way we can pull those dependencies. Uh, it's just uh, additional work that we kind of like right now, not ready to take on. Um, our primary goal is let's get everything customizable out and uh, we will follow up with the standard entities uh, and sort of like post GA timeframe. Excellent. Uh, here's, here's another question. Um, could the dependency API coverage report be merged into the metadata coverage report? We, we not that far on the coverage report yet to 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 like to for me to really answer it honestly. Um, we was we definitely getting an inspiration from a coverage report from for metadata coverage report. Uh, from user experience, how we can merge it? This is a big question because I think it's even a big question right now. What that report would look like, and we haven't uh, worked uh, with um, UX people yet to sort these things out. Of course, uh, if if it's not merged, I definitely want it to be somewhere in the same location. So maybe if you go to metadata coverage report, there's a separate section for dependency API. If it's not part of it, so it's not like you know you need to you need to know that this that thing exists. 
but again uh, we kind of far from that yet to, for me to give like an answer ideally yes we want to merge it we want like unified experience across all of those coverage reports that we provide awesome and here's a question um i'm going to try i'm going to do my best to kind of paraphrase the question uh, but Caesar has a custom field that is used in, in some of the workflow field updates. Uh, when when I check where this field is used, I'm not able to find the workflow field updates. And I hope I'm not butchering that question too badly. Yeah, uh, yeah, there, there are, again, and that's why and that's exactly why we need uh, coverage report. There are some, and on top of my head, um, I know that there are, but there's some aspects of workflows that are not covered by depends api i believe uh, some places where you can reference custom field it would pop up and depends api and the button and some would not one of the things if if you deactivate workflow i think it, the reference would disappear so it doesn't track inactive workflows um, again that's that's the whole reason why we need uh, coverage support not only for you guys for us as well Again, because you know, I my my knowledge about workflow is quite limited, and but we expose in this and like you know, for me to know where where those things things reference and how they they reference, it's 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 a big win. So yeah, the possible, I think the the most likely answer is like yeah, this is not yet supported. I heard about workflow problem before. I think it just told the uh, the, the problem that. Either it's inactive and it's not tracked anymore because workflow has special logic for inactive workflow workflows, or there's some special error in workflow where you reference it and it doesn't track the dependency. Same way everything else is tracked in Salesforce. That's why it's not exposed. Again, we haven't opened up it's entity by entity. We just open up in bulk of entities that are using the same mechanism. And there's some special case in like was with reports that why it took us longer to add report support. And again, once we GA, once we have a coverage report, we definitely would want to continue that conversation on driving uh, gaps to closure, things like workflow, for example. Great. Um, we have a question about the bulk dependency API. Uh, will there be a pilot or will it go straight to beta? I really want, I, I really want to avoid pilots. Um, as much as I like them, I think that, that, that we have a pretty mature stage. I mean, we're not introducing anything completely new. It uh, would still use Pipen API underneath it. We just use a bulk, uh, bulk uh, framework, which is also a mature product. So my hope is that uh, in summer, we will go straight to beta. Uh, we might start with sandbox only, just as a as safety precautions. Uh, but um, my hope it's going to be beta available in sandboxes. Awesome. Well, I think I think we've covered all the questions. If there's any last minute questions, now would be the time to ask them, folks. We have a few extra minutes. Otherwise, we will start wrapping up this webinar. Again, um, Vlad, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you to all of our attendees who checked out Vlad's great presentation. Again, if you have any additional questions, check out the Trailblazer community. Vlad is active there. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks for all your questions. And thanks, Chris, for uh, giving me the opportunity to do this. Happy to be here. All right. Bye, everybody.